Nuke Proof Giga, take 5,746. Hey everybody, it's new bike day. And on hand, we've got the Nuke Proof Giga. This bike right here. You might've seen images of this bike floating around over the last couple of months. If you spent any time lurking in some mountain bike forums, hasn't exactly been the best kept secret, but it's real. So now we get to dig into all of the details of this new beast. You can get it with either 27.5 inch or 29 inch wheels. This 27.5 inch version comes with 180 millimeters of rear travel and the 29 inch version comes with 170 millimeters of rear travel. No matter the wheel size, all the bikes come with 180 millimeter fork up front and have a 63.5 degree head tube angle. So pretty clear where this bike's intentions lie. There are three complete models, all with full carbon frames. Prices start at $3,500 for the comp version. They go up to $4,600 for the elite version. And the factory build that we have here is 5,500 US dollars. If you wanted to go the frame only route, that's gonna set you back $2,600. Parts get highlighted on this bike. You've got a full Shimano XT drivetrain, Shimano XT four piston brakes, Fox factory suspension, form of a 38 up front and a Float X2 shock in the rear. A DT Swiss aluminum rimmed EX 1700 wheel set. And those are mounted up with some Michelin Wild Enduro tires. And then Bike Yoke handles the dropper post duties on this bike. Uh, this size large has 160 millimeter dropper post. The frame alone without a shock is said to weigh 2,900 grams. So not super light, but reasonable considering this bike's intentions. All right, let's take a step back for a second and talk about where this bike actually came from. After all, Nukeproof already make the Mega, bike with 160 millimeters of travel that's had some pretty good success under the likes of Sam Hill on the Enduro World Series circuit. This bike, it started while they were working on the Descent downhill bike. They started wondering what if they took that suspension platform and created something a little bit more pedalable. They made an aluminum mule called the Mulse, and that's if you take the word mule, combine it with Pulse, which was the name of the previous downhill bike. That aluminum mule, they tested it out and decided the idea had merit. So they ran with it, created this bike. Basically, in their words, the reason that the Giga exists is because they could. Time to go over some of those geometry numbers. Here, this is a size large, and that has a reach of 475 millimeters, chainstay length of 445 millimeters, and a head tube angle of 63.5 degrees. Now I should mention, chainstay length remains the same across all sizes. We are starting to see more companies have size-specific chainstay lengths. That's not the case with this bike. There's five sizes available. It goes all the way from small to extra, extra large. And according to Nuke Proof's sizing chart, that should accommodate riders from five foot two inches all the way up to six foot seven inches. That's a pretty broad range. There aren't any geometry adjustments to be seen on the Giga, but what it does have is an adjustable main pivot. So you have basically two main pivot positions. You can adjust them with a eight millimeter Allen key, undo a bolt, a full turn, flip a lever, and you have a higher position. So one of the settings gives it a 29% progression, and the other one 25.5% progression. So basically, you want something a little more supple off the top, plenty of ramp up, there's a position for that. Something a little more mid-stroke support, there's a position for that. It can also work well if you're gonna be running a coil shock. So this bike is easily air or coil shock compatible. Basically those adjustments just allow riders to really fine tune the bike to their liking and the terrain that they're gonna be riding. As far as other uh, suspension related numbers go, bike has either 96% or 100% anti-squat at sag depending on where that main pivot position is again. So again, Spike was designed for the descents, but they didn't forget to make it able to be pedaled and uh, without feeling just like a big wallowy mess. You have clearance for up to a 2.6 inch rear tire. It also has plenty of room for a water bottle inside the front triangle. It's got a really neat design where the water bottle almost sits kind of cradled by the down tube. You can see that right there. So plenty of room for that full size water bottle. Um, generous chain slap protection, nice and thick on the seat stay and chain stay. So, got a ride in on this bike already, nice and quiet. Uh, that's also helped by the tube and tube internal cable routing. And final details has ISCG tabs, as well as a threaded bottom bracket. So basically hits all the points of what you'd like to see on a modern bike. One more feature to mention is this has SRAM's universal derailleur hanger. We're seeing that come on new bikes across the board, which is great to see. Basically, that means that if you do somehow break your derailleur hanger, there's a good chance that a shop will have a new one available and they're relatively inexpensive, I believe around $10 or so. This bike just showed up, so I only have one ride in on it so far, so I can't really go into any in-depth impressions, but I can say right off the bat, I am impressed by how well it pedals. Um, very efficient feeling. There's not a lot of shock movement. In the full open position, you can look down and stay in pretty calm. And even if you stand up and mash on the pedals, not a ton of bob, which is impressive considering it has that 170 millimeters of travel and that Float X2 is a pretty supple shock. So it'll be fun to kind of experiment with that. 
This bike's made for the descent, so that's gonna be the main focus, but I'm definitely gonna take it on some weird, awkward climbs, see how it handles that stuff. Um, so far, the position itself for climbing, nice and comfortable. I keep talking about steep C tube angles in pretty much every review these days, but they are really nice for this style of bike, and the overall position of this one feels great for me. Uh, on the descents, I've only tried it in the more progressive setting. It was super wet, super muddy, so I wanted that extra suppleness off the top. It seemed to work really well. You can plow with this thing, but it does have that nice peppiness that I've kind of always liked about Nuke Proof's bikes, the, the Mega itself. That's always had this extra little pop when you want it. Seems like that's there with this bike as well. But like I said, that's only a first ride, so we're gonna have to do some more riding, do some back-to-back -back with some other bikes in this category, so stay tuned for that in the future. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, so you can keep up to date on all the latest tech news and entertaining features from us here at Pink Bike.